We're at round seven, Sainers. Welcome back to the Saints TV YouTube channel for the match preview. We've got it Friday night. Prime time again. 7.40 p.m. Port Adelaide at Adelaide Oval. Port rebounding from a very disappointing loss to, to the Maggies at the G last week. And for us, we need to show a lot after last Thursday night's debacle. We've had a good break. We've had over a week to prepare. No excuses. Max King returning and potentially Dougal Howard. It looks like those are the only two. Paddy Dow, I thought, might have snuck in, but he's going to go through the VFL. Ross Lyon confirmed earlier today. Port have got one of the best midfields in the competition in my eyes. Zach Butters, Connor Rosie. Jason Horn Francis. Throw in Ollie Wines casually, who just goes under the radar now with how much attention the other guys are getting. Miles Bergman goes all right for himself. And then their forwards, Georgiades, Todd Marshall, Ruck and Forward goes through there. Charlie Dixon looking like he's going to return. Sam Pal Pepper, they can afford to leave him forward now a bit more as a defensive forward. Always has a just a huge game against us. And then the back line, Alir Alir, Radigalia, are going to cause us all sorts of problems in the back half if we don't use the ball properly going into the forward line. So this is a game, to me, it's teetering on the edge of if we, it's a fine line between us winning and getting blown out of the water, simply because it's just a ground we struggle at. It's against a team we struggle at. And their biggest strengths are our biggest weaknesses. They've got some great rebounding defenders. We bomb it in quite a bit. And don't use the ball well going inside 50 in general. And we saw even with a midfield minus Tom Liberatore, who's the number one clearance player in the competition last week, we still got our asses handed to us. And the weird thing is we're winning, I think we've won clearances in maybe three or four of the six games we've played, but it's not just winning the clearance, it's the quality of the clearance and what you actually do with it when your hand's on the ball. So Port Adelaide are very effective in that for scores from clearance and we are bottom tier, you know, in terms of just general clearances per game, maybe 14 or 15th ranked. So whether we go defensively minded there, Rowan Marshall needs to have a huge game in the middle. Maybe a Jack Hayes comes in as well um, with Max King and we go a bit taller, especially because they've got a Lear Lear and Radigalia down there. Maybe we need to keep them a little, and uh, obviously Zerk Thatcher, um, keep them more accountable than maybe what they're used to. They they kind of tried to play off Collingwood last week, but Collingwood utilized that and, and played smaller and and used their, their leg speed and got out behind. And that's why, you know, you saw Bobby Hill and these sort of guys um, getting onto a few goals and setting up a few goals uh, for their teammates. So that means Jack Higgins, you got to stand up. Dan Butler, he's out, unfortunately. So maybe Collard sneaks in. If not, we go with the one and then we just sacrifice a small four at all and, and go big in this game. Uh, obviously, Jack Hayes coming in would offer a chop out for Rowan Marshall, and I think Rowe is definitely due one. He looked a little, he had a semi decent game last week, but not one of his all time best. And I think, you know, last time we beat Port Adelaide was at this ground four years ago, Brett Ratton, and we had the Paddy Ryder Rowan Marshall combination with the young Max King, and it worked a treat. So, do we go with a dual ruck? Um, you know, start Jack Hayes forward, and then when Roe needs a chop out, just rotate him in. Caminiti maybe makes way, or a Shaman, because they're both... I mean, Shaman's been thrown all over the shop, so is he one that we make way? Does Filippo get omitted and get a rest and go back to Sandy? I personally don't think Ross will do that. Maybe he's the sub. Garcia gets another run. But the biggest concern is the midfield. We need to <laughs> just go man on man, I say. Just go man on man in the middle. And um, try and win the ball first. Last week, we were second to every single contest. The Doggies were first. They're first in, but they're also first out. So if they've got more players going to the football, it makes no sense if they've got more players on the outside. So I think last week, we had too many players going in for the football. And then when we won it, there was no one on the outside to hurt the opposition. In this game, we need to back our teammate, back Jack, Jack Steele to go in, win the hard ball, and then wait on the outside for the hands and then go. 
I think with speed on the football, that's where we can hurt Port. Port are a very good, contested, physical, just tough, bloody team, you know, and the crowd's going to be up for it. It's going to be one of those games where they want to bully us, they want to intimidate us, they want to make us feel small on that field. So if we can counter that by taking it, not getting intimidated by it, but then actually running with the football with a bit of speed on it and hitting targets like we weren't last week, then I think that'll go a long way to, uh, you know, kicking enough goals to win the game because that's another concern is we average, what, 10 goals a game? If that, they're averaging obviously a lot more. But the one thing I do question about Port Adelaide is, you know, how legitimate they are. They're, you know, a lot of people do say they are a little bit of a flat track bully, so they beat a lot of the teams that they should. But then when it comes to beating teams, you know, kind of level on them or higher on the ladder, they don't come up trumps. And you look at the teams they've lost to this year. They've lost to, who they lose to? Melbourne and um, Collingwood. You know, two two teams that have been top four for the last couple of years with Port. Again, they fell short in both games. So if we can bring a bit of pressure, get that Saints footy... DNA going again. I don't see why we can not go there and and impact the scoreboard and and potentially sneak a result. It would be a huge result for us to get our season back on track. We are significant underdogs in this game, which is no surprise uh, given the form of both teams this year, in particular last week. Both looked pretty average, but particularly us, we looked shocking. Um, If there's ever a game to win, to, to get momentum and to to kind of make up for whatever was last week, it's winning on Friday night. And we've had some primetime slots this year already. And, you know, Collingwood, we got the job done. A few others we haven't. This is another big opportunity. Um, And it's really going to test the group, this game. The history against Port, like I said, is not very good. But if we can break even in the midfield, not get smashed. You know, Jason Horn francis we have to watch him. I don't mind, you know, um, Ollie Wines and these sort of... Like, they obviously, we don't want them to have 45 possessions because Ollie Wines is a gun, but it's it's the impact that Jason Horn francis someone like him has um, with his impact and his pace. He drives the ball forward. He gets the game moving fast. He His 20 possessions would be more valuable than, I would say, a 30-possession Ollie Wines game, if that makes sense. So Jason Horn francis is absolutely a focus in the midfield. Obviously, Rosie, he is in absurd form um, over the last year, probably. So he's one of their, if not their best player. Um, and then obviously Charlie Dixon, the back line has got to be on point. If we are to win this game, the back line will need to be good because Port play tall, they play physical, and um, if they're the sort of team that can just get on a run and kick a big score. So we can't come out of this game with the win unless the back line stand tall and just we're going to have to cop some heat. We're going to have to absorb it, but that is something that we've been good at for the majority of the year, apart from last week is that we've had games where the opposition's had a lot of inside 50s in a game, a lot of consecutive inside 50s in a period of time, and maybe we've leaked one goal or two goals, and that's it. So we need to make sure that that happens here. We can't start the game slow. We've started too many games slow this year and behind the eight ball, and we're chasing. If it's quarter time and it's five goals to one Port Adelaide's way, I mean, come on. We need to come out with some fire. We need to go into the quarter time break... And I want people that thought this was going to be a one-sided game to be like, shit, Saints have turned up. I want the neutral to think, we've got a game here. This is going to be good. You know, let's see what the Saints can do. Not, ah, okay, comfortable. Yeah, I kind of thought this was going to happen, which is, you know, what, we've, what we're used to in our, um, in our history. So it's a massive opportunity for us to make a statement, um, to announce ourselves again as, as a good team, as a team on the rise, and not to... If we lose this, we go, what, two and five? Makes it very difficult. The next three weeks after that, North, Hawthorne, Fremantle, all winnable, but they're winnable when we're up on confidence. You know, if we get batted in this game, we go into those games, you know, kind of tail between our legs, not feeling very good, and then that's a recipe for disaster. So I'm... uh, I said in my review last week, I'll give them last week, mitigating circumstances, even Ross and the president kind of hinted at things like that. This week, the opposite. No excuse. Turn up. Back your teammates. Back the method. 
and execute and let's give ourselves the best chance. So comment your thoughts, Sanders. Let me know how you're feeling about this game. I can kind of guess you're bloody nervous. So am I. I'm always nervous against Port. You know, even if Port were bottom of the ladder and we were top, you would still feel like, yeah, this is a game we'll lose because we just always lose to Port. Um, we hardly play them at Marvel. And when we do, we uh, we choke. And last last year, Jason Horn Francis, he was the difference. Go back and watch the game. We started like a house on fire at Marvel. He lifted and they just upped the physicality and they got us like that. So we should be wary of that. Obviously, they're going to want to do that again, even more so on their home deck. But um, it's all about, we want to see the boys rock up. Whether that means a win or not, it doesn't matter. We just want to see them rock up and perform and play their role effectively um, over the four quarters. So, comment your thoughts, Sainers. Thank you very much for watching. I'll be doing my live review after the game, win, a loss, or draw. Um, so, stay tuned for that at around 10.45 p.m., probably on the Friday night. Oppo view tomorrow. The teams will drop uh, tomorrow, so 6.15 p.m. live with Jaden and the crew. They'll go through the teams. It should be a very interesting watch. Um, and, yeah, enjoy the rest of your week. Enjoy your, obviously, your Anzac Day day off tomorrow. Um, and, yeah, go Saints. See you guys.